I made a mistake about the uh, video. I posted the video about uh, tanks which uh, Yugoslav National Army, you know, uh, basically tanks which were under command of the Serbs entering Bosnia. Uh, Bosnian territory at the beginning of the war <clears throat> on the Balkans that was a great Serbian Chetnik war against several nations at the same time uh, they launched this war for a Serbian supremacy within uh, what they believed will be continuation of the Yugoslav Federation on the Balkans uh, and it's very, very important for me to correct uh, and declare, basically. I'm referring to this video here. I'm declaring, I am referring to what you see here. It says here, Pollock. It says Pollock here. Uh, and it says here, it's also Pollock. It's very, very important for me to clarify this stuff because um, this is about the, the color of the tanks for which uh, Slovenian side uh, next to others involved in it demanded for me to clarify myself whether I was or I was not present uh, definitely on every recording that you see when the war started to progress throughout the Bosnia, I was present. It's very, very simple. Um, people involved in MKUltra asked me about whether I was the one who ordered Bosnian and Croatian people to grab the tankists. They barricaded roads as a Serbian tanks rolled down the road. Uh, these are actually Serbian tanks, but were hijacked by the Serbs under a brand of the Yugoslavia, uh, Yugoslav Federation. Uh, I was. I was the one whom Alia Izetbegovic cursed like nobody else ever in his lifetime, uh, so that you know that I was the one. Okay. Uh, uh, let me just calm you down. I was not only in Polog, and then there is another location they demonstrate. Uh, I would be delivered with the cars. I would be delivered with the cars uh, throughout Bosnia. One time they would have me appear here, another time they would appear me here, and so on and so forth. And <laughs> to, to me personally, it was for unknown reason uh, till I actually uh, lost nerves about this stuff where I didn't want to be on this picture absolutely anywhere. Uh, but because Croats and Bosnians indicated willingness to listen to me, I was drugged up under MK Ultra. I was transported throughout the Bosnia during beginning stages of the war. Uh, knowing, being completely aware of my being drugged up, I took initiative to literally instruct Cro Croats and Bosnian people to go on uh, once it's barricaded where they would bring me to locations where they demonstrated me it's barricaded and the tanks can't go back and forth. They can't go anywhere. Uh, and they were asking me what to do. I didn't want my statements. And uh, I, I took a little time to investigate about what, what went on. And before Alia Izetbegovic came on the scene, uh, I watched this... Uh, Serbs, uh, very closely I evaluated the military, Yugoslav uh, Serbs dressed in this Yugoslav uniforms, 
uh, and they indicated me a death threat. It was just once they indicated me a death threat uh, because of probably already the other locations. Uh, and the only thing I did was, yes, I started to uh, talk to Croats and to the Bosnian people that it's just time to grab them, pull them out of the tanks, beat them up, take the tanks, and march straight on Belgrade. The year, as you see, was 1991. This was something that deprived Slobodan Milosevic and all the way to his apprentice, Alexander uh, Vucic, everything in between and after of the sleep. They couldn't sleep because uh, they couldn't cope basically with disgrace in their face that somebody would be drugged up, eventually would go on in face of gun barrels, basically, death threats, uh, would demand from people that surrounded these tanks to get into the bar barrel with the tankists. Uh, this this is particularly exactly the, the location where they had me, and they have audio recordings and all that stuff. I remember this blue jeans, all this stuff, people dressed up like that, you know? Uh, and, uh, you know, they couldn't take that. So the Serbs, what they would do is they started to, because of this disgrace. Uh, Alia Izetbegovic came, and Alia Izetbegovic was the president of Bosnia and Herzegovina at the time. The most important people in Bosnia and Herzegovina. However, I consider myself to be more important uh, person than Alia Izetbegovic during MK Ultra. And so I, I, um, uh, I really wanted these tanks in my possession at the time, and I wanted to get out of this MK Ultra. You know? It was a, what a wonderful opportunity for me that, you know, I, uh, I volunteered them. I told them, you know, let me just demonstrate you, you know, let me just go and just do what the fuck I do and let's go and let's get them. Let's just go to the tank, just grab these people out. Uh, it was, I was at least thought like inches close. It, it was a Croatian uh, individual whom I consider even today as a traitor. I will never forgive him this. Uh, he fucked me. Uh, moreover, he fucked Croatia, he fucked Bosnian people terribly, uh, who uh, demanded from me to, uh, to stop because I got people ready to go to grab these officers, soldiers, just pull them out and get the tanks, basically, new tanks, basically, just waiting uh, for the opportunity, I mean, just free weaponry right there. I mean, they were barricaded. They couldn't go left and right and forth, backwards, anywhere. Uh, it was a beautiful, spectacular opportunity that I wanted to take on it. And it was this Croat that uh, demanded from me, bullied me on a issue that it does have to be waited, probably was a mayor of a region, whatever it was. I considered uh, everybody as a coward. I didn't give a three shit about these politicians. I just, you know, I just wanted to get done with it. And on every location I was delivered. That's why Ali Zedbegovic hated me so much. He apologized for his views on me. He hated me already for the fall of the Soviet Union. Um, he had a big problem with me because he wanted Yugoslavia to exist. Uh, and uh, if they would have listened to me, they would, sure, they would get, they would get equipment, extra tanks. If not for Belgrade, they could definitely use this along the Croatian and Bosnian, uh, you know, lines where the war raged, started to rage. Um, the first thing that happened with uh, Alia is at Begovic when he came, he started to yell at me again, and uh, I lost it. I exploded. And the thing is that uh, this is a problem because under MK Ultra, it's like 
like this and they they only use you for whatever they want to use you want to get the statements they want da -da 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 -da, and this shit is like a remote controller Bing, and you're gone it doesn't make any fucking sense it's a it's a it's it, it, it's a it's a it's a procedure that you're in absolutely no fucking control and controllers really are in a total control of it you have no control whatsoever nothing and it doesn't matter how persistent how strong how uh, whatever resistant it just doesn't matter because you become a prey for just your lifetime basically slave of the nightmare uh, however Alia is a Begovic uh, it was it was a very important location for me and Alia is it big which that location because I he was very explosive this guy was very very um, temperament individual he could get in my face and threaten and so on like no other politician I tolerated this sometime because it was Alia Izetbegovic because this was Bosnia anyways I couldn't understand for that reason also why they got me there uh, but uh, in that location I think it says Briek or whatever it is let me see that Pod Briek what do they say Pollock uh, on this location however I for the first time because I repeated this exact procedure uh, I incited uh, Croats and Bosnian the soldiers to go and just rip uh, military installations just fucking take guns just help yourself people and um, they were creating these situations maybe Alia Zedbegovic created them who the hell knows and used me as a backup as a maybe as a source of information whatever the, the case might have been and um, he was always would come it, it would always be like this as such a the dodge Alia according to Alia is it such a the dodge on you that they were giving me this kind of bullshit. And uh and I, I always wanted to know who is this person? What difference is this person gonna make? Basically, to me, under MK Ultra was of interest, who is this person? On whose side is this guy? Because when I started to take side of the Bosnians and Croats. What I wanted is the person that is going to do the job right there, right now. The people that were delivering, these people had nothing to do. At sometimes they would be the enemies of what appeared at least to be a spirit of people, of the native people over there. So Alia is a big majority, very much. Uh, disappointed me Moscow before that and I didn't want to have nothing to do with it way before the fall of the Moscow this guy was a trouble but it doesn't matter uh I somehow liked Alia is it Begovic it's uh maybe uh I don't know um anyhow um they didn't take tanks Alia is it Begovic came um the situation was solved you know? so sold my ass it's been sold today to the internet to the people on the internet they sold it was not solved if they screwed up situation completely now at that time i evaluated you know if i evaluated under mk ultra something uh there was of importance to me i can tell you that the tanks were too close you can maneuver when you are too close there was no up down because it was hill uh barricades close the road a lot of people there uh you go you grab one and sure enough if the lives of those other guys are dear to them uh they come out of the tanks it was the beginning of the war i calculated it's the opportunity to just do it or lose a tremendous opportunity uh Serbs uh were extremely agitated with me and they rehearsed this reality of MK Ultra place to get 
wrong statements from me, but foremost, to intimidate, to harass through the most severe torture, through the most severe sleep deprivation that I'm cared for, at least on like 10 occasions each time for probably one week, it lasted. Till they would get, uh, they never, uh, the most disappointing part, however, is they never ever obtained anything that would defer from my first account. Then what they started to do is they started to deliver the Serbian woman. So that means they reorchestrated this stuff on their territory, where they also video recorded some kind of documentary, which I believe, because they insisted me, and that's how you get fucked. Uh, so close to reality, basically, that they started to insist me uh, if for saying something like this, and you're going to be considered as mentally ill. I grew up in a country known as a Yugo. Slavia, beginning at the age six months, when I started to get distributed through old Yugoslavia and all the way to the Moscow and all the way abroad, even through Eastern Germany to Britain, United States, and so on. Just like three months later, I found myself in Germany for the first time, Eastern Germany. Uh, in this country, the MK Ultra was used to murder people. It was the main instrument, it was the main tool. The main tool was not Goliotok. The main tool was not um, Barren Island, where they say how Tito killed people and so on. The main tool was not prison. The main tool of the greater Serbian Tretnik state known as a Yugoslavia was MK Ultra, uh, I should say psychiatry. When I say MK Ultra, MK Ultra translates into psychiatry. And when it comes to psychiatry, uh, what they would do is they would murder people on the spot. Um, this is when you're killed, basically, on the spot. And how close was I uh, to death? Yeah, okay. Uh, uh, let's say it this way throughout. Since already kindergarten, uh, no, nah, shit. At, two, at age two and a half, the local psychologist told me that for antidepressants, dip, uh, antidepressants chocolates are to be used. Uh, beginning the kindergarten and beginning the grammar school, uh, um, the system used uh, teachers, the educators, to impose a psychiatric terror on me through the children which surrounded me, basically gesturing me that everything is my head, that this is happening to me, that I'm crazy. Uh, but they were not crazy doing that stuff. Uh, these kids who participated in MKUltra, not as victims, and who did this stuff, uh, did everything possible in this world to pull out of me statement like, <clears throat> like I'm going to give you an example, okay? Um, yeah, this one happened already. This is not so impressive. It's not so impressive. To me, this is not impressive. I like the earliest memories first, but okay, this goes to like, um, All right, this goes to like, I need to calculate this properly. All right, this goes to like uh, second grade of uh, a high school, uh, you're talking about my age, I don't know, 15, 16, and uh, you would I would have kids, for instance, uh, big kids as a schoolmates that uh, they wanted to have like a physical fights with me or whatever, and they couldn't beat me up, and they tried, and they couldn't, no matter what they would do, they would have teachers coming inside, 
whenever they would whenever i would handle them and they repeated this procedure very very unsuccessfully um this is shit actually happened also in the sixth grade and it was the same thing it was the same procedure they did and it was also in the second grade of grammar school and um, they promised me during mk ultra on how however they will break me down basically my willingness to defend myself and i will allow them to uh, physically overpower me and so on yeah. so um they um started to harass intimidate during mk ultra uh and uh, not even during mk ultra they could accomplish a uh, desired result for a very long time this shit dragged on and they didn't deliver victories even during mk ultra they couldn't uh and then one time they did uh and they started to score victories through mk ultra that was totally basically defenseless uh what they stated to me now we're going to do it to you in the real time so that you will uh understand uh how we do it uh and uh once you will uh, say this and that is when you're dead basically no so basically difficult if you would if you would dare to say in a country like this that you're being tortured drugged up that this stuff is stuff that's being done to you um the only thing that would happen is they they kill you basically they, they what they say is that that you're mentally ill, that you're paranoid, that you have schizophrenic, that you have uh, privit, that you have delusions, that you are that you you are something is wrong with your brain, that you see certain things that don't exist. Uh, it's basically your word against your schoolmates, uh, teachers, uh, psychiatrists, uh, entire environment. Basically, uh, you're you're fucking dead. Once the psychiatry uh, got you in their hands in Yugoslavia this is when you go straight to Ljubljana Polje psychiatric hospital Ljubljana Polje they did this already to people uh, and the only thing they did with the people over there once they get you over there uh, the only thing they, the only thing that happens is uh, is the amount of electroshocks no longer under MK ultra used is just as i was told it, it is is so high this is such a brain uh yeah, like hammer basically hammering of the brain just like they told me you know it's like a hammer that breaks any stone you know that's basically how then with this electroshock they 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 you know right now you have a difficulty learning you have difficulty memorizing the material from the school but when we get you on a uh they played with uh, my ability to memorize uh, certain subjects after the class after i would take study them at home they would go and bing and even make fun of me in my face during mk ultra telling me you're going to fail for examination again <laughs> and so on uh, but once they get you in once they got people into psychiatric hospital you got polia uh, this was just the hammering uh, of the brain the victims that uh the victims would not even be able i don't know to speak anymore you you're you're they they kill you they like uh, all this expression brain kill uh, they they not like in the u.s we have brain kill you or whatever you know i came to the u.s and they were uh, talking about uh I don't know song the brain killer or this brain killer and so on i heard a lot of that stuff uh, well the truth is i also i didn't grow up in the u.s but uh in yugoslavia the only thing they did is uh, they killed you you did you just they killed you that's all there is to it yeah um and so uh 
the ability, my, my strength, my power uh, that I carried on against all these odds, I continued to attend school because they were trying to get all kinds of issues against me, anything they could use to destroy you, get you to psychiatry or something like that. Um, uh, with a low attendance or any kind of attitude you give to the teacher, especially you, you are just, just fucking good as dead. I mean, you, you're gone, you're finished. They were, they, the, the violence that went on basically went on so that they would discourage you even from attending the school classroom. You understand? That was basically what the shit was based upon. And so that you would say that you would try to even interact with your schoolmates about MKUltra or something like this. Um, as good as that sentence. As, as good as you wanted to commit a suicide. You were as good as that. Uh, psychiatry was since the beginning of the time. And uh, the MKUltra was just as they teach, as the teachers explained to me already, like, you know, first, second grade of grammar school, this is just uh, something, whatever they, they refer to as a procedure, I don't know they, what, the, what they refer to this procedure as uh, back then, but they refer to this procedure as procedure that this is just a way to, to kill you, basically. Once you're going to start talking about this stuff, just that you want to understand that you go straight, that you are, you're dead, straight dead. And uh, it was people also uh, from Osona Shola Gurum, from the school, grammar school, which I attended, and also older people that uh, somehow were connected to this environment that they, they put to death, basically, killed, brain killed. And people disappear very quickly through this, through this kind of system. You just make a, just a little sleep, just a little mistake, and you no longer existed. Your life was over. Was dead. They killed a lot of children in the first, second, and third grade. This was like a selection. They, uh, as soon as they would get the child, would, the child would dare to talk about MK Ultra. I was one time in the third grade or second grade, close like this myself, like this, like this, being killed. Uh, as soon as you would dare to talk about MK Ultra or something, it was your death. It's a death sentence. This is Yugoslavia. This is basically the way it was. I came close because it was two other kids. They started to discuss this issue uh, on a class. Uh, one of those kids uh, suffered a tremendous misfortune. He already suffered enormously and was completely destroyed. And uh, another kid faked. He was a liar. He was, they used all kinds of uh, real cases and they used, as the children already, they used uh, teachers, uh, also used uh, children that were, uh, they acted like double agents, basically. Like it would be your friends that incited you next to another one to talk about this, and we're going to discuss about this. Then you would voice and you would start to speak, and the only thing that will happen is a dead sentence to you. You're dead. Teachers had like no. No mercy at times, like in a second grade, the teacher literally uh, would tell of the class that uh, this one is dead, basically. The other one, dead. Uh, like this. This is basically what I grew up for. So for you to understand me, where I am coming from. In the end, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about Josip Bros Tito. Uh, there was a Marshal Josip Brostito who was caught audio recorded and perhaps I said I was suggested audio definitely audio recorded that once this boy killed me beginning the age five in Novo Mesto and in Bela Kraina, gave the mission to the locals here in Novo Mesto and in Bela Kraina, where my mother is from to to get me murdered he was obsessed with idea to get me murdered because of his crimes against humanity. Obviously, this beast was involved in, but he was extremely tactical. Uh, on a camera, he was my best friend. He was my best buddy who would give impression that he is 
grooming me to become his bodyguard even. It's what Slovenian police, this Udba people, involved this uniformed police officers, grandkids of the partisans, uh, demanded from me to see myself in him, at least as his bodyguard, for them to help me out. Uh, in reality, however, he would always give instructions to Slovenian delegation uh, to cause me as much harm as possible during his visits to the city of the Novo Mesto, for sure at age five, if not already at age four, Josip Broz Tito gave an order uh, to the locals, I will not say any, anything about who, to get me absolutely killed, to destroy me, to get me killed. He repeated the same thing in Bela Kraina. Uh, Josip Broz Tito had, I don't know, brother here or whatever. Uh, he would have a lot of friends here in Novo Mesto, but it was the Bela Kraina that he liked much more than a Novo Mesto city. Novo Mesto city was a, more the city with a profile of people that are uh, maybe light-skinned, uh, blue-eyed, uh, more like overall uh, Slovenian population is. Uh, as to Bela Kraina, it was the people that were diverse people. They had uh, they had this uh, military uh, installations down in Bela Kraina. It was people from all over in this Chernobyl, Metlika, and my own relatives welcomed him. Uh, he was uh, uh, very very comfortable, very very. Uh, sure about, certain about uh, that uh, his orders uh, will in fact be carried out. And really, Slovenia did everything best to its abilities to have those uh, orders of a Marshal Josip Broz Tito fulfilled uh, for at least 51 years. Uh, so, uh, going back to the subject of I don't want to distance myself too much. I, I wanted to give you the impression about, basically about what exactly went on. Uh, it also concerns the police officers from the Nova Mesto who was involved in that, they're from Udba assassins, uh, with the background, with the partisan background, with, the, with their grandfathers being uh, partisans, they were extremely, extremely proud about. Uh, so this is the video about the Serbs, uh, about the Serbian occupation of Bosnia and Herzegovina and Croatia, where I displayed enormous power, determination, courage, obviously with a silicone mask over my face, or at least with the cameras pointed in direction away from me with cuts done from even probably where they had me wear this silicon mask, whatever. Um, Ali Azadbegovic was a pain in my butt. Uh, I was really disappointed with him and became openly angry about it. After he inquired me even to reopen, uh, oh, basically the guy supported the war basically on Slovenia and stuff like that. Uh, a manufacturing facility, Volkswagen, in Sarajevo, TAS, Tvornica Automobila Sarajevo, uh, which I was very much interested. I liked Sarajevo, and I like Bosnia, and I like all this stuff, but there was a huge, huge, huge problem. Uh, Alia is at Begovic, always. I did not uh, negotiate with Alia at Begovic, or anybody politician for that matter. No, with Milosevic, not with anybody. Not even with the Tujman, not with anybody. It was either it's going to be my way or it's going to be a highway. Simple as this. Uh, they were laughing at the time. They had a good time at the time. Uh, they shouldn't. They did. Uh, I would. I know I wouldn't. Um, the thing is that these little politicians on the Balkans 
uh, that in eyes of many are still a big politician, at least in my eyes are big politicians, because of the memories I have on the childhood and when I was growing up and all this, seeing these people on the TV, uh, the importance that these people carried on through what I observed so on the TV, these political messages, uh, all the stuff that went on. For me, these are actually big people, but in reality, probably these are very small people. In the United States, nobody knows about these politicians. Uh, even in Europe, people know nothing about these politicians. But it was a big thing that these people have control over that would play very different if they would follow my orders. Uh, well, it becomes an order. When you evolve somebody through MK Ultra procedure, uh, this person, uh, when asking him for such issues, this actually becomes an order. It's just, especially if it gives you a sound order, then you should just, I mean, if, if, if the guy is really sharp and he knows what he's talking about, he has his vision that is indefinitely correct vision uh, and have proven itself a million times as correct. Uh, you should follow. Well, Bosnian people wanted to follow, but the Bosnian side was divided. Half, half, I would say. Half wanted to go with the Serbs. Half wanted to go in a Bosnian state, uh, independence, uh, with Ali Izetbegovic taking extremely, extremely strong stand against me uh, everywhere, basically, before he even, uh, just as he would come, the first thing he would be, he would explode. Now, the truth is, as I stated earlier, I say what I say, I say based on my memories, the truth, however, could be that Ali Izetbegovic who appeared to me a very brilliant politician otherwise, might have been somewhere in the background already watching all this shit, this show, and have, based on what he observed, made a decision. Maybe better decision than I, when I was drugged up, got myself an impression about. But it was said, truly, that on two occasions, Croats and Bosnians had a really good chance to grab those tanks and get them in their possession. It was not only about the tanks, but it was also about the military installations for which I wanted Bosnians and Croats to breach uh, on a territory of this military installation, basically disarm them, uh, get the weaponry and, you know, just start their movement, basically. And uh, some of those situations were extremely, extremely embarrassing, literally with the people, with the Bosnian, with the Croat people getting... Uh, Angry actually with Ali Azadbegovic and others, uh, siding at least with me, giving me a signal, you know, uh, that, uh, you know, you would have listened to him and this and that. He was like this, you know, we would have this and we would have that, yeah, but you didn't want to listen to him and so on. It was the stuff like this that went on. Uh, Serbs, however, became extremely obsessed with what I stated right now. For them, something like this, there was a jerked up Slovenian guy that was kicking all over the place. Something that grew from little into something like this, into... I never considered myself as a rebel or something like this. is never the attitude I'm going to take. I always take legal, lawful, uh, realistic, and personality and figure. I always did. I never was... Uh, interested in any Russian, Serbian, uh, excuse me, mind, brain fucking, uh, a rebellion, uh, funny, awkward uh, <laughs> figures they were trying to suggest me. They tried to in get me involved in all kinds of even terrorist activities, suggesting me what I could do and this and that, connect me with people from all sorts of countries so that they could get an excuse basically against me to have. Never was interested in any of that stuff. All those offers I declined strictly. For me, however, it's very, very important that you do a knowledge in Belgrade that I was the one, because there are audio recordings, and people definitely have those audio recordings, there was somebody who did. I did the hell of a show, whatever I 
popped up, make sure that uh, that the orders that I gave, because this is what they wanted, they wanted the orders from me, uh, could be loud and, you know, could be all heard uh, loud and clear about what the hell do I want. I, that was a gentleman Croatian that played a very extremely important role I saw a little bit earlier. Uh, now, uh, Serbs were so obsessed with this that they would reorchestrate this psychiatry you want to call one a documentary or MK Ultra, whatever you want to call this, because they did create a documentary uh, about the conflicts they had uh, during this war on Balkans, that at least on 10 occasions I would be sleep deprived, probably not for one week, as I stated earlier, but at least probably for two weeks at a time without any fucking sleep, uh, reminiscenting the circumstances from MK Ultra delivered to these locations. But before you would be even delivered to these locations, you would you would meet, I would have to meet Serbs on the side that are going to play over there, uh, whatever they wanted to uh, bully me with, to demonstrate me basically that it's not worth, that I'm wrong, uh, even that the women that I want are actually Serbian. Uh, and foremost, before they would deliver me to these locations, they would have the people whom I would meet at these scenes, at this documentary, whatever they were recording, uh, intimidate me, harass me, torture me, uh, basically saying to me, if you will say, when I speak with the other representative, uh, this and that, uh, you know what's going to happen with you then. Uh, and they demonstrated all these things. So this is important for me to clarify that whatever recordings Bosnians and Croats have about me participating in a war throughout Bosnia and Herzegovina and Croatia at the beginning stages, uh, those are actually a real audio recordings of me. I was, I participated in God knows how many of these locations uh, through Bosnia and Herzegovina. Literally, when they were making groundbreaking decisions about what to do. Now, the important thing is uh, to always remember that uh, never, ever, not even one single time did I go backwards or anything like this or indicating any kind of weakness. Uh, I, contrary, have demanded from the Croats and from the Bosnians always to take guns in their hands uh, and basically do whatever is a duty, uh, their duty dictated, duty of every human dictates to protect his people, his national integrity. Um, as for the Slovenian assassins, the Udba assassins, uh, police here in the city of the Novo Mesto, I'm going to play with them a little bit for the last two minutes, uh, as well as with the Roma family here, not too far from here now. Uh, I'm going to take basically everything away from you right now. These people were involved, as for the Roma family, not the guy that grew up here, but it was his cousin, I think, who was the one, uh, actually, excuse me, his brother, who he brought from the Zabiak, who guaranteed me death in the third grade of the grammar school. And that time, I was age eight, nine, during MK Ultra. He briefly attended, I understand, even Osnona Shola Gurum. He was in another school, and they had him attend Osnona Shola Gurum. It was a Slovenian Yugoslav Udba that got me people like this. They basically get you killers already at a very young age that would come to you and tell you, I will be the one who will kill you. And so this was the guy who I seen the other day who met me last time like 
like in the earliest that I can go, that he promised me a certain death, that he will be the one who's going to kill me. Uh, it was in, I say about second grade, when he stated me for the first time, for the first time, excuse me, first time that he will be the one who will kill me with other schoolmates, with not so much schoolmates, but uh, other kids, such as Yanko, uh, such as was uh, psychiatrist Peter Kapsch, Novo Mesto Police, they literally have him come in my face during MK Ultra when I was age eight to state to me that he will be the one who will, in fact, kill me, that he is designated by the Udba who will kill me. Uh, interesting enough, uh, this Roma family claimed me. They have lost all their relatives during the World War II. I don't know how many the Germans killed and so on. Uh, that this Roma family is not a regular family, but our, their ancestry was killed in a large uh, percentage by the people who occupied, uh, by the Germans and by the Italians during the World War II. And so these are like a partisan family. They, they classify themselves as a partisan family. Uh, the first violence this Roma family started to engage in me with these kids was when I was like a six years old. They already have the grammar school with the teachers, with police. They already had them engaged in violence against me. That's how far my memory goes in respect to the neighbors who met me the other day, not too far from here. Uh, as for the police investigators, uh, no, it's not about being a grandson of the partisan uh, of the partisans. None of these people had uh, grandparents that would be as involved in a national resistance as much as were mine uh, from on my father's side, especially, and also on my mother's side, where everybody was enrolled in officially in a national resistance, in a partisan movement. Uh, with my grandfather literally uh, inspired Schindler's List, which was video recorded not according to uh, based on my grandfather, but based on something that would be comparable to what my grandfather was doing during the World War II, his role in World War II resistance. Um, for this uh, partisan uh, grandchildren, what I'm going to say is that if you have uh, swines like this around you, uh, you cannot also but hate also uh, national resistance or Svobodilna Front, but you cannot other but hate absolutely everything that is in this kind of environment that uh, they uh, they literally presented, st stood up for. Now, while in real life, thanks God, I was brilliant enough to avoid any kind of conflict or expose myself to any kind of anything that would demonstrate a hatred toward uh, national resistance, World War II resistance, or something like this. Uh, during later stages, because as a child, I didn't even get this stuff yet, about this this stuff. Uh, it was the kinds of stuff they did to me already as a child that made me feel unpleasant. It was more about unpleasantness and so on, but a real, real breakthrough uh, in respect to the partisan movement uh, Russians and uh, uh, criminals in blue uniforms, if were what they refer themselves as a police officer from the novel mess of the investigator. I have a criminal here, the next door, Method Yerman, that's one of the gangsters here. That's one of the killers right here, one of the Udba killers is right here, and then you have another brother right here, next to it, Cyril Yerman. There was nothing other than criminal next to criminal. It's, it's, it's bizarre to think that I actually live next to the beasts like this here, this environment. They had so much control over me. It's bizarre to hear that he says, 
I am an investigator, a higher investigator. I have a college, actually, university, finished and so on. It's fucking bizarre. To my ears, it's an insult to hear something like this. Even the people saying, oh, I'm a doctor, especially like I'm a psychiatrist, or I'm a general doctor, or I have a doctoral degree, or I know something. You don't fucking know anything. You know only whatever you are allowed to steal so that you can demonstrate your might, basically your violence, your might, your hatred through the perspective of what just can be done to somebody if the system against a single person, his entire system goes up to him. Otherwise, you, you are completely more of the right criminal profile. You fit more of the right criminal profile of the criminal than the people that are imprisoned inside of the prison system. You know, we're talking about the real criminals here. We're not talking about the police here. These people not only have disgraced national resistance to Svobodilna Fronta. I told you about my grandfather, how my grandfather actually ended up after the World War II. How? Where he retired. He retired at this home for elderly people in Maribor, where he was beaten up like an animal into the pool. And probably even killed, who knows. Abused severely. Uh, this about completely other issues. It doesn't matter if I'm grandson. It doesn't matter. It doesn't, it doesn't even matter. This is about actually the world that these people should take responsibility for. After the World War II, they have totally disgraced. It might have been on behalf of the Yugo Führer, Yugo Marshal, Josip Broz Tito, dictator Josip Broz Tito, Many call one a uh, mass murderer. I am prone to believe this. I know what the, he was a beast in my case. Uh, but moreover, Josip Brostito was really a nobody. Moreover, this is about the legacy which you have inflicted upon, your legacy which you as the grandkids of the partisans have inflicted upon, Decent people of this world that went on to die, whether in Normandy, anywhere from Normandy to, uh, it doesn't matter, Eastern Front or whatever front, people were trying to liberate themselves from annihilation. And it's what, how you presented this, uh, your own grandfathers and grandmothers that participated in this World War II national resistance to the world. You're not criminals. You're something else. You're worse than criminals. And so proud that they are grandkids of the partisans and so on. And uh, always, uh, whenever searching with the police, it was always about, it, it feels like everybody in the police station belonged to this national resistance. So we did front a movement that this is just the way it is, that this is the way it was, but... Uh, Something was terribly fucked up about all this, no? Something, something there was just completely out of proportion. Something, something was just not right. Something was just not ticking. I mean, you go and you do this stuff like this. Uh, I mean, you got to ask yourself, uh, truly, with what right? Who gave you that kind of authority? Who gave you that kind of right? I mean, one Yossi Brostito cannot give you the authority to cause such a... Uh, misconduct, so criminal misconduct, you can't be fucking serious about some loser over there from Kumrovets uh, that became some kind of a national symbol of resistance it was thousand other people that were more qualified than he was chosen to be the one uh, that you would carry on uh, on his behalf something uh, totally against the law, totally against all principles and ethics, uh, for the fuck of all, basically for one person, uh, and even beyond this, do the stuff that is just, uh, not even Adolf Hitler did this stuff like this, not even SS or Gestapo did this stuff like this. This is just crazy, bizarre, insane. It used to be difficult for me. It really no longer is. I accept it for what it is, basically. Um, 
Look, this little gangsters from the novel Mesto, this isn't the only thing I'm going to play to you. These little criminals from the police station of the novel Mesto. Uh, they were asking about if I was here, Shiroki Briek, uh, uh, or I was here at the Pollock. But the truth is, I was here and there. This is the answer to the psychiatrist, Peter Kopp, who wanted to get con to, number one, to confuse me and with the Serbs, whatever he was doing throughout the Bosnia, throughout the Serbia, to convince me that just ain't fucking worth to, uh, to talk about the stuff like this. Well, I think it is, uh, because I think just as the audio recordings exist for the city of the Novo Mesto and for the Bela Kraina, for the city of the Novo Mesto, 100%, uh, how Marshal Josip Brostito ordered for a five-year-old child to be killed, uh, you know, playing a really nice guy on a camera and something giving the totally, completely different impression during his visits in his environment or this child, uh, it's also the audio recordings that are going to testify against this criminals from the Novo Mesto police station, against the Udba assassins, of course, uh, that are historical and valid, of course, worthy of the Serbian hatred against me, or I should say Russian hatred against me, worthy of my name, basically. In my name, uh, with my hands done, uh, yes, I was not only on this location, but also on other locations where I demanded from Croats and from Bosnian people to take arms in their hands. Uh, the one who was extremely bothered with this, what I stated right now, was a Karadzic, Serbian psychiatrist Karadzic, who was involved since my childhood as well. He had a lot of problems with this. But, you know... This here, this is a Zadar, but before I go to Zadar, I'm going to go to another location. I'm going to go to this location here. This here, this stuff here. This, this is the place where I was. And, you know, when I told you about the British, how the British royals, uh, they would deliver me to London and they would just uh, do a scenario that was like overly fucked up, stupid, ridiculous. Uh, and I would go and I would ask them, I, I would say, just, I would say, Andrew, just, I would just say to, for this royals, I would just say to them, why don't you just tell me what you want me to do or say, and I would do it and say it, and we're going to cut all the bullshit. I mean, because it, it, the torture repeated so many times, it was always the torture. And after the torture, they would present you in the scenario. And I said, listen, why don't we cut this stuff and with the torture and so on, and you just tell me what you want me to say or hear for me or do, video record, do, and I'm going to do it, and that's it. And it was the worst thing I possibly could have done. Uh, that one resulted even in 10 times more, uh, I think at least electroshock, if not torture any kind of stuff like this, anything intelligent that would come during an MKR or anything like this, it was so punished that it was just unbelievable, that stuff. Uh, this Yugo, Belgrade, uh, Serbian soldiers were in a, in a, in also in the same mode. They wanted, they played the terror, some were good, some were bad. Do you like me? You don't like me. Do you like me? You don't like me. Then they started to play with uh, like they're playing against one another and so on. Uh, then I had to watch those that sided with me also uh, cursing in my face and that threatening me and so on. This was a zakletva. Zakletva means uh, giving an oath to the Yugoslav national military. Look at this schizophrenics. Look at this shit. Look at this. Look at his teeth, how he is. Huh? These are the guys who tortured, by the way. Huh? And they also record like this. You know what? Two years later, the Yugoslavia was gone of the picture together with the Soviet Union. 
and in the 99 these guys ran like a rabbits in their hole i'm going to demonstrate you the video from 1999 when they loaded me with americans like a cattle in the train that went from belgrade to the kosovo in which serbs were so proud they were bloodthirsty claiming me involved in mk ultra now we are going to the war with the west and they were actually celebrating departure to the war with the West, which occasion on a train, I told them, why don't you just lay down on the ground with your weapons and beg for mercy right now so that you spare yourself lives. Basically, I intimidated them all the way to the Kosovo, getting numerous death threats with American reporters disappearing from the picture just on time. Numerous death threats, but okay. So I want you to know, I want you to hear, this is 1989. Oh, look at this guy. Oh, this was my friend. Listen, I want you to remember, I want you to know, not that I know who you are, where you were, what you did or how, but I want you to know how you lost your country, how you jiggled how you throw on a roulette and blew your greater Serbian Chetnik state, how one turned into ashes. Uh, straight into your giving the oath to kill for your interests. This crime here was at large condemned by the cross. They didn't like this kind of conduct either. Uh, it was exactly as I stated, it would happen whenever I was delivered to the Britain. Uh, I didn't want to have nothing to do with it. They molested, they tortured, uh, till I started to pick on them. Uh, and once I started to pick on them, uh, you know, then they would do their uh, intimidation scenarios uh, and then they would present themselves like this, exactly like this, and the different in cameras. And this here, this you have in Croatia, in Zadar, where the mayor also yelled at me uh, that, uh, you know, uh, This is a nice city, this is a Zadar, this is different, this is, a, uh, it's not like this, uh, it's different. Uh, so when you're talking about the oaths, they would have me associate with the people uh, about, I'm going to estimate about two months before this oath would even take place, yes, they would deliver me. Uh, and they would uh, associate me uh, with people who would be running the show that you're about to see, you know? And also, of course, with the soldiers that would participate. So I got to know these soldiers also. So, so this was in the Zadar, Croatia. And this is where I was actually yelled at uh, by uh, uh, local mayor people, uh, top politicians, the locals. Uh, that this is not like over there, that this is different, this is more civilized, uh, but it became evident that it was nothing more civilized, actually. Uh, the same shit, it turned out to be the same shit, but the Croats did use, I'm sure, opportunity to get a good background uh, and evaluate militarily, the preparedness, moral, everything of these troops and so on, what exactly on uh, how to prepare and so on what's coming as next. In 1989, the Soviet Union already was dead. Yeah, the Soviet Union was already dead in 1987. It was just a matter of time before the Soviet Union would fall apart. And I would not, under any circumstances, give any kind of hope to the Soviets in Moscow. Absolutely any.
1989, it was a game over. Uh, it was a finish. It was it. <laughs> it doesn't help, you know, it doesn't help. <laughs> Alexander Vucic stated me never to say anything like this, that some of them even lost their uh, comrades in the war is what he stated me, or that I would be killed. <laughs> well, this is way better than to be a schizophrenic, right? It could be that this is a Zadar, so it could be there was another location. If this is a Zadar, then there was another location. Uh, another location was just as shitty, uh, was more shitty than even this one here, and this was shitty. This was a really shitty as get location, uh, Zadar, uh, but on other locations where they had me, that was actually even worse. It was even more violent, if anything can possibly be more violent, but it was. Um, do you know what this shit is here, 1989? Huh? Do you know what this stuff is here? This, given a note? Huh? Do you know what this is? Yeah, I'm going to tell you what this is. Uh, this is a nice, beautiful reminder of the Yugo Udba people here employed by Slovenian police. They still have the criminals employed. Imagine this. They still collect paychecks. They still get paid for killing people, for doing damage. Uh, I was compelled to go visit criminals when they were giving the oath in the Yugoslav military to their locations. At least three of these police officers involved in it, investigators, I had to go and visit them with the last one. I think it was the guy who met me at Brusnica, I think, uh, that, how about that, huh? So you want to say that if I know you, if I remember, if I recall you, how about this stuff? Did we talk about it? How long, do we, how long have you been involved in genocide against me? These are not new people. These people are involved in genocide against me. These are hardcore Udba people. So I have a proof, I have indefinite proof that I was talking about a real Udba assassins. They were involved in genocide, in hardcore genocide against me, what is since 1985. And my God, 1985, for fuck's sake, that I was only 14. I, that's basically as far as I can go, like holding in my hands like physical proofs. Because I know because it was others, foreigners, that would go. And if it was not foreigners, it was people from here, whoever video recorded that stuff. On, in, in my head all the time and picture are Americans and so on that would video record and document the stuff. Uh, there is a strong possibility that in Yugoslavia that might have been people from Slovenia or wherever that would go in video records there, uh, oats, uh, with a video cameras, probably also my presence on their uh, ceremonies when they were giving the oath to Josip Broz Tito, I should say, to Yugoslavia. Well, don't fucking say to me that I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about, that we didn't met each other before, that we don't know each other before, and or something so brazen, like everything is my head, something like that. It will be, it will be, it will be, it will be. I will deliver you what you were looking for all along. I will deliver you 
make no mistake, whoever was involved in this case will get invitation to the court. You will get the chance to tell whatever you have to tell, if anybody's going to listen to what you have to tell. But as far as I'm concerned, since 1985, we were going to the ceremonies of what became officially my killers involved in, in my case. With a neighbor here, a Roma from Roma family, who gave the oath to me on behalf of police, Slovenian government here will be the one who's going to carry the kill on me. There's just one more issue I will discuss to you today, and that's going to be by my playing the video for the people to know where. He's going to close this down, this one, this one. This guy was involved. Both of these guys were involved. Uh, this is Kills around the corner. acting. This is not real. It's funny. Okay, no. It's funny, but it's not funny because the guy is faking it. They're good actors. That's all there is to it. The, both of these people were involved in a lot of torture. Did not forget about that. It's funny, but it's not so funny. It's only funny as much as we're allowed to be funny. Beyond the memories. I can afford myself. Um, Hey, these guys knows me, know me very well. I already have Americans video recording this stuff. Here. No, 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 no. no. It, was not like uh, it was not like this. Uh, the way. No, 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 no. no. It was not like this. It was no. This, this is bullshit. No, 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 no. This is, this is, I don't know how any of that stuff. That's a bullshit. You know the reality? I am going to tell you what the reality was. They have done a massacre on Kosovo in Bosnia, in Croatia, and uh, they celebrated it. It was fun, it was music. It was a rock and roll. It was a Serbian national music. Uh, it was alcohol like an ocean. It was fun, killing people, massacring people, anywhere from Vukovar to Sarajevo to Pristina. And the time came when NATO decided enough. And the fun became fun on the streets of Belgrade with the Serbian soldiers talking a lot of shit about how they are going to go now and they are going to kick the ass of Western imperialists. This is the way it was. I don't allow any of this shit here because I was on this train, because I remember what they have done to me on this train. I remember what this train of pain was all about. And I was not only on one train that you see right there going from Belgrade to Kosovo. They had me on at least several Serbian trains with the soldiers packed, anger, totally schizophrenic environment, mad, raged, taking initiative in death threats, and I don't know what, well, heading to Kosovo. This is how it all started in that same year. Basically, this is how it all ended. They have many versions, many explanations about Bill Clinton being a war criminal, uh, all kinds of all sorts of issues. 
uh, NATO being a criminal organization and, and all kinds of stuff that we can see, again, is taking place all over Ukraine. Uh, all kinds of visions they present after the war, after the war in Balkans ended, yes, uh, except the stuff they have done. Uh, that is the stuff that was not convenient. And if I would keep silence about historic documents, about the real witnessing, about truly exactly what went on, about the hard for core facts, I alone enforced on the Balkans for the different, for the better, not for the worse. That also would be greatly appreciated, or we will kill you if I repeat uh, Alexander Vucic's words of wisdom. It all ended with this year. This is how it all ended. It ended with the Serbian soldiers running for their bare lives, hiding themselves all over the place, uh, begging on the knees, nothing like with a song. It was still known as a Yugoslav. Nothing as a song of Yugoslav dictator Josip Broz Tito. It was nothing like this, you know? It was not like that. By the way, this gentleman also was involved in MKUltra. He also wanted me to talk about Josip Broz Tito, but it would be more like hmm, me being bodyguard of Josip Broz Tito, not the stuff that I discussed. That is stuff already I have discussed, these beasts have done on me. Uh, but to see it, he would witness for me if I would just see a little bit different. You know what I mean? If I would just see a little bit really a schizophrenic, then it would be okay. The only schizophrenics in this case was Serbs and the Russians. Their violence, basically. That's the only one that was mentally ill all along. I feel they are singing about me, uh, but they are referring to the Yosip. Uh, who was always happy to receive Sofia Loren at his Belgrade Ranch in the center of the city. Uh, I don't have anything else I would say about this. Uh, I think I did a good job now. Over 30 NATO peacekeepers were injured after clashes with Serbian protesters in Kosovo. The Serbs had a man. Okay, uh, that's all there is. The rest, no, the rest is the history. Very important for me to declare I was the one, in fact, who demanded that. I am not going to give any kind of credit, anything, any kind of honor uh, to the Serbs or Russians for that matter. Uh, I want truth to be known about who did what. It's, it's very, very important to me for the truth to be known. This stuff, uh, this stuff here, this is going to go right into this section here. I am not going to have to worry about that kind of stuff. Like this. Maybe that's interesting. What I mentioned to you about this Roma guy here from the village behind, uh, that stuff is really interesting. Let me see that stuff here. I am not after this Roma guy. I am not after the Roma community. 
uh, but I am after this neighbor here whose name is Method Hermann. Now that one uh, truly I am after and I will not stop and I will not rest till we meet face to face on the court and straighten up whatever his problems, frustrations are in respect to me once and for good. Yeah. Um, next to the figs uh, here, uh, right outside of uh, our uh, house, there, there are figs there. And uh, I saw the other day uh, there was uh, a hay forks that were uh, pushed into the ground right next to this. Uh, Pigs right there. Yeah, I don't know if I'm going to find this stuff here. Uh, and uh, it's not going to make a whole a lot of difference. I, I video document everything, absolutely everything. He just All right, these are the guys obviously I'm talking about here. In order to catch me, so you uh, know something? This is the village right next to uh, the village, our village. Uh, basically, the he forks right outside our house, next to the figs, were pushed into the ground. I went to get some figs at night and I see this he forks pushed inside. And I can't forget the neighbor, Roma guy, during MK Ultra. He had a lot of death threats to give. Well, one of the death threats was also a he forks, which he had pushed Told, ordered my mother to place them right next to the figs and have stated me uh, next to all that threats this was just one of the death threats extra that he stated to me uh, he gave me a scenario which was manipulated by other people as well on but he gave the order to, to my mom that she is to place the he forks right next to the pigs. Uh, so that obviously that is what's going to be used to stab me through my chest. But the, the thing is that during MK Ultra, more than receiving these death threats, you know. I was always stimulated about who is giving this guy, who the fuck is this guy here at our house, talking to me like this in front of my house, in front of my home. This Aroma guy touched a very sensitive subject to me the other day when he asked me if I think I'm a king. Actually, who do I think I am, he said. Yeah. Uh, I was more interested about who is giving him the rights to do this stuff. Do you know who was next to him and next to my mother who was doing the stuff, who dragged all this initiative? It was Method Yerman, the investigator. He said, a high investigator, Method Yerman. He was the one who not only gave the right, but deputized. And it was through Slovenian state that this Roma individual somehow got compensated for the stuff like this. And he did this stuff because uh, he came to conclusion that, uh, I don't know, that I don't like him, that uh, 
because of me that either way that he's going to have to move to this other location over there in uh, Prekmurje on the other side of Slovenia and stuff like this, which is totally, totally not true. Um, uh, I never had absolutely anything to do with this guy. This guy did a lot of stuff that he shouldn't. He gave the death threats. Um, I was not angered by him doing stuff like this. I was angered by Slovenian people enforcing the stuff like this. I was angered by the people that had him do like stuff like this. Uh, using their organized crime to even insist me that uh, I bear responsibility for his, uh, I don't know, economic failure and stuff like this. Um, this guy, uh, according to the Slovenian authorities and also to himself, uh, basically, I think that they they persecuted him. I think they troubled him. Uh, I think that they caused him a lot of troubles. This is the way I see it. Uh, why? Because he had some business he was doing. You know, I remember that it was a business he started to do. It was some kind of uh, something had to do with the construction, something like this business. And uh, uh, I don't know. It, it was it was very very lucrative financially. It was very good. I think this goes all the way all the way back in 2000. Remember, between 1995 and mid 2000, August of 2006. That's 11 and a half years since 1995 to 2006. I was nowhere in Europe, absolutely not in Slovenia, never outside of the United States of America, with exception to three occasions, maybe maximum three times maybe that I visited relatives of my ex-wife together with my ex-wife in the city of the Ecuador, in Ecuador, in Quito, uh, city Quito in Ecuador. Uh, so uh, it appeared to me that he was crying to me because, I don't know, that business did not, was not so lucrative, lucrative anymore. Uh, they insisted that he is doing drugs, uh, selling drugs. This is a strong possibility of it. Uh, it all started through what they claim was uh, job offers that they delivered to him, and then there was no uh, uh, that he did not perform very well, and he did not perform. Uh, very well until he really did not perform very well because for his not performing very well the Slovenian police also got the statement from me uh, through asking me what to do with him as far as the job and so on and stuff like that so I know that uh, it was all kinds of things in sometimes probably 2015 uh, he have himself found himself uh, in the world of drugs, he himself had problems. This is the stuff I should not know because this supposedly this is the first time when we met. Uh, people don't get into the world of drugs. It is not for money, job, therefore job stability and so on. And this is the stuff that was all the time used to shop, 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 uh, to do, to keep him basically, to a certain extent, definitely uh, unstable. Uh, and this is the expression he will know. He doesn't like this stuff. He wants to be seen like uh, uh, self-employed and prosperous and so on, just like he's successful and so on, uh, to what I think he even greatly succeeded 
based on his environment where he came from, uh, school and everything that he he managed. Uh, in a world like this, I think he did extremely well because dealing with the police, dealing with the psychiatrists, dealing with the politicians, dealing with uh, this kind of stuff and have that kind of case uh, laying on your back, uh, it's actually a very difficult thing to do for any person that would go out there and fuck uh, in, in the back, in the rear. With this kind of issues, this is not, this is not a pleasant stuff. This is not a good stuff. However, that was the first SP that he had. And then he had some other SP as well. Samostoyni Podietnik, the honesty, uh, self-employed, uh, that would be registered as self-employed, having as a business owner. He had also some other businesses afterwards. Uh, however, uh, he will have to articulate, he will have to apologize, rationalize to me up to the last millimeter and not nowhere near with what police anticipated. So I police wanted to get the statements from him. I am gonna have a completely different questions, completely different tasks he will have to fulfill to demonstrate that he is actually competent enough to self-sustain in completely free, normal environment. Yes, for me, this is not a normal environment. If it's for him, normal environment, then he's not normal for me. Uh, these are the things he will have to testify, including against this local neighbor, my police officer, Mentor Yerman and also against other police officers, as well as against psychiatrist Peter Kaj. Just making sure that you understand, everybody understands what exactly to expect in this case. Thanks for watching this video. Now you know who I am, for sure. Now you surely know who I am. Uh, till next time, take care of yourself, whatever you are.